Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Guys at Magic. This is Hunter and Shane. Say what up, Shane. What up, nerds? We are back. Took the weekend off because spoiler season always takes a bit of a lull during the weekend. But there was some shown on the weekend, so we'll talk about them in this video, as well as all the spoilers that were announced today, being August 22nd for Dominaria United. A lot of cool goodies in this. Very excited to talk about. So, Shane, let us jump right into it with this first card. This is Keldon Flame Sage. Keldon Flame Sage, it's two and a red for a 2 3 creature human shaman. It has enlist. It says whenever Keldon Flame Sage attacks, look at the top X cards of your library where X is Keldon Flame Sage's power. You may exile an instant or sorcery card with mana value X or less from among them. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. You may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. Dude, did you say exit from exile? <laughs> Would fit right into that, wouldn't it? What does enlist do again? Is that when you attack, you like get a 1-1 or something? No. So enlist, for those that don't know, including you apparently... Uh, when Kelton Flame Sage attacks, you may tap another creature that does not have summoning sickness, and you Kelton Flame Sage will gain that creature's t uh, power. That's right. I was just testing you. I remember that. Okay. Yeah. I so, did it for people at home, dude. Honestly. So you can make this big enough to <laughs> look at X top cards. You know, at least yeah. this will always work. You don't even have to enlist. It'll always be two, which is pretty cool. And you get to play it for free? You get to play a two-mana spell for free. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, dude. It's a little uh, bit of a spell slinger type deck, I think this would fit into. Probably mono red, honestly. Uh, I kind of like it. Yeah, it looks, looks good. It'll be pretty good, man. It's getting free spells. It's always great. I am a fan of Keldon Flame Sage. I think it will see play. I Next up, would. we have a new land. This is Plaza of Heroes. Plaza of Heroes is a land that you can tap to add a colorless. You can also tap it to add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast a legendary spell. You can also tap it to add one mana of any color among legendary permanents you control. And another ability where you can pay three and tap it in Exile Plaza of Heroes. Target legendary creature gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. So Wizards kind of said, hey, you know that EDH game type that's kind of popular? Here's a pretty good land for it. You're always going to be that. using this for your commander. Your commander is legendary, obviously. Seems pretty good. This seems like a, just an easy shoe-in for any EDH deck. It really is. It's, um, it's what people are saying. I really don't know how like else to talk this up because it's pretty apparent. How strong this freaking card is. <laughs> yeah, I, I think... Um, thinking about the shoe-in thing. I mean, yes, you're going to be always using the mana to cast your commander. But again, having a land that just comes in untapped is so valuable. Yeah. So, flexibility I mean, is pretty good. Even if it's not your commander you're casting, in EDH there are a shit ton of just legendary cards that you're casting. So it could just be any of them. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you have legendary enchantments that you can play with this. It's just any legendary spell. It's pretty good. Strong like land. It. Strong gonna, land. It's going to be expensive, guaranteed. Buy him. Yeah, buy on the dip. Hoping to open. Hoping uh, to open, dude. Love it. Hoping. Hoping. Hoping to open. Uh, <laughs> next up, we have Karn. Karn's back. Karn Living Legacy. Karn Living Legacy is a four generic mana for a starting loyalty of four. It has a plus one that says create a tapped Power Stone token. What is a Power Stone token? Well, it's an artifact with tap to add a colorless mana. This mana can't be spent to cast a non-artifact spell. Don't know why it didn't just say it can only be spent to cast artifacts, but... yeah. Uh, it has minus one that says pay any amount of mana. Look at that many cards from the top of your library, then put one of those cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And an ultimate at the minus seven that says you get an emblem with tap, an untapped artifact to control. This 
emblem deals one damage to any target. Uh, people are calling this maybe one of the worst planeswalkers they've ever printed. I was gonna say, dude, like this, they made Karn a, like he's a really good planeswalker, and they just kind of shit on him. Look like, yeah, this isn't great. I don't see a world where this is good in anything. It doesn't protect itself. It gives you tapped things so you can't use it right away. Like, it just seems so slow. And then the, even the ultimate it only deals one damage. <laughs> so like you're just tap like, cool. I can tap my I can tap my, my like, treasures. Treasures, yeah. <laughs> I guess if I made a bunch of treasures, I can ping you. But yeah, it doesn't. I don't know. Doesn't Maybe we're wrong, but it seems bad. Doesn't seem great. Karn, no. living legacy didn't live up to the legacy in this one. I tell you that much. Negative. Yeah, but yeah, those are those are the three cards they showed off for the weekend. Like I said, couldn't have made a video for just three cards. Uh, moving on to the cards they were announced today, we got the White Defiler. This is Defiler of Faith. Defiler of Faith is three and two white for a five-five creature for Exian human. It has vigilance. It says as an additional cost to cast white permanent spells, you may pay two life. Those spells cost white less to cast if you paid life this way. This effect reduces only the amount of white mana you pay. And also, whenever you cast a white permanent spell, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. Seems really good. Seems pretty good. I kind of feel like all these cycles seem really good. Yeah, I mean, we made fun of it. It's, as soon as we get the red one, it's going to be like, oh, one damage to the face. We'll still see what happens with the red one. But the Phyrexian Defilers, pretty good. Making tokens. Making you cast token. a white. Oh. Yeah, permanent spells too. So it's like, put a portable hole down. Make a 1-1. One, one. And the portable hole could be free. Yes. In a sense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Two life. Just pay two life, put a portable hole, get a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, Seems your life. Good. That, yeah, when, whenever you can make your life a resource, dude, I'm a big fan. I'm pretty sure David's a big fan of that too. <laughs> He is a big fan of that. He's always been a fan of paying life, which is interesting because coming up, we will see something that completely shuts that off. A little, little tease there. Spoiler alert, dude. Mm. Uh, let's move on to a new vehicle. This is Weatherlight Completed. Weatherlight Completed is two generic mana for 5-5. Five five. It's a legendary artifact vehicle. It has flying. It says as long as Weatherlight Completed has four or more viruses. Viruses? counters on it mm. it's a phyrexian creature in addition to its other types and whenever a creature you control dies put a phyrexian counter on whether like completed then draw a card if it has seven or more phyrexian counters on it if it doesn't cry one so, so this you don't crew it no crew cost yeah so it just sticks around gets its phyrexian yeah. counters and then and then it's just not a then, that's weird as soon as it has four Phyresis counters, it's just a 5-5 five, five flyer, which is pretty good. Uh, so just kill four of your creatures. You make it into a vehicle, which is doable. So for uh, four turns, I mean, that's, unless something dies, like if, unless you have a board wipe. Oh, I guess that's a good, a good turn on a board wipe for that time. Yeah, it's just right? an artifact. Yeah. yeah. But then after that, you have to wait seven, like for... Well, you make you draw a card if you have seven or more, right? So every time a yeah. creature dies, you're always going to get a counter. So for the first seven, right, you're always going to scry. So oh, cool. got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty cool. That is pretty good, actually. Okay. So this sits around as long Scrying as you're... your cards. Mm -hmm. I think this would fit nicely in the Anvil deck. I was about to say, yeah, the fucking Rakdos sacrifice deck, dude. Yeah, it's pretty. Seems pretty good for. Just have a five-five flyer just sitting there, just waiting to be turned letting, on. Dude, turn letting two. you scry, dude. Fuck yeah. Yeah, and this is an artifact, so it fits in the theme with the artifacts. Interesting. Yep, that's gonna slide in there somewhere. Yeah, I, I like can it. See it. Weatherlight completed. It's good. Uh, next up, we have a new enchantment. This is Stronghold Arena. Stronghold Arena is one and a black, and it's a kicker cost of a green and or a white. It says, whenever Stronghold Arena enters the battlefield, you gain three life for each time it was kicked. 
And it says, whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, you may reveal the top card of your library and put it into your hand. If you do, lose life equal to its mana value. Always a strong little card there. Strong effect. Oh. Remind me, with these kickers, you just pay it the, like, you can literally just pay the one green and the one white, and then that's it. You can't yep. keep paying it, right? Correct. Okay. It's just that. So you pay just the green and or just the white. So you could pay four and gain six life? Uh-huh. Got it. It's not bad. Yeah, dude. It's a good way to siphon through your deck. Whenever yeah. a creature deals combat damage for two mana, this just sits on the board. You can look at the top card of your library. If it's a land, you put it in your hand for free. Seems good. Is there a deck in standard that runs these colors that would benefit from this? I don't even know if you need to add white or yeah, I, mean, I guess you're right. I, I think guess that's yeah. just kind of flavor at that point. Yeah. Just two mana. I think uh, lots sure. of life being spent in this set. What? Yeah, I like it. I like good. it, man. It seems good. Next up, we've got a new Goyf. This is Urborg Lurgoyf. Urborg Lurgoyf is one and a green for a star and a one plus star. It's a creature, Lurgoyf. It has a kicker of a blue and or black. It says, when it enters the battlefield, mill three cards for each time it was kicked. And its power is equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. And its toughness is equal to that number plus one. This card's nuts. Yeah, so if you're running a creature heavy, like sacrifice theme deck, this seems real good. This just... Will it see play, dude? I don't know, man. I don't know, dude. It doesn't seem good enough. <laughs> the kicker of blue is interesting. Yeah. I mean, I guess blue is mill. But whatever. It's just This card uh, seems really fucking good, dude. It seems really good, right? Whenever you yeah. see goif, usually it's Wh pretty whenever. good. Whenever. Whenever you see stars and one plus whenever stars. <laughs> whenever you see one plus stars, yes. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about this card. It's uh, it's it will see play. it will see play in standard one hundred percent. One hundred percent. What do you think about it? As far as is it good in EDH? Or, I mean, is Goyf good in EDH? I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. Regular Goyf isn't good because it's you can only have a set amount of types, right? Whereas this just keeps going yeah. with the amount of creatures. Oh, you guess you're right. So is this a better Goyf? Wait, is this a better Goyf? In a sense, this Goyf can be bigger than the other Goyf. I think the other Goyf was good because it was standard. You That's never true. see the other Goyf in EDH. But is this one capable of EDH? Maybe. But then again, Maybe, you have yeah. to. But the color identity is three colors. You have to find it in a, those colors. Yeah, which I don't think is impossible. Yeah. Overall. It, this, this could be a late game bomb, too, because it's a star, dude. That's okay. Yeah, definitely. For two mana. Just coming in like, hello. Yep, good card. Uh, good card. Uh, this next card, Radadrabric of Orborg, is two, a white, and a black for a 3-3 legendary creature zombie wizard. It has Vigilance and Ward 2. It says other zombies you control have Vigilance. Also, whenever another legendary creature you control dies, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a non-legendary, and it's a 2-2 black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. This seems Whoa. real good. This would be this a fun see, to build around. I was say like, this would be a sick EDH card. Yeah. Zombie Lord, dude. Just start making copies of legendary creatures and they're not legendaries. Whoa. Whoa. It is a bummer that they lose their power and toughness to a 2-2. Two -two, yeah. But they do gain vigilance. Wait, did so. it say enters the battlefield? Because if they have sick ETBs, that it goes off, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a, you're yeah, creating yeah. a token, right? So when it dies, yeah. you create a token. So, so if that I token think... has a sick ETB or a death trigger, I mean, you don't really care for the 2-2, right? Right. That's cool. Yeah, the death triggers, the ETBs, those are sick. Uh, anything that's just like a world effect is also really good still. Basically, your legendary stuff can't go away. And they'll all have vigilance, dude? What? They'll all have vigilance as long as they're dead. <laughs> True. It seems uh, like a cool card. 
yeah, I think we'll talk about it more when we talk about our commander grades. Because uh, it is a legendary. Pretty cool. Is it going to be played in standard? Unsure. Unsure of standard. Don't know if it's that good for standard. But... Well, because the black-white deck right now is angels, right? Not zombies, so. Yeah, you definitely have to... I mean... It'd be a whole new deck. It's doable with the uh, Champion of the Perished. That's still in standard. Oh, Maybe that'd be fun, actually, yeah. Up. yeah. Lots of zombies. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe I'll build something around it. And here's the one I teased from earlier. This is Karn's Silex. Karn's Silex is three generic mana for a legendary artifact. It says it enters the battlefield tapped. It says players can't pay life to cast spells or to activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. You can also pay X and tap it. Exile Karn's Stylix. Destroy each non-land permanent when mana value X or less. Activate as a sorcery. Well, this is why they made Karn so bad. They made this card amazing. <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, this is also from the story. This was supposed to stop the Phyrexian invasion, and Johnny went ahead and destroyed it because he is completed, killed Jaya, and kidnapped Karn. Uh, and then, basically, Sahili created a new Silex because, of course, Sahili did. And Teferi's going back in time to the Brothers' War to see how Karn actually knows how to use it since Karn is kidnapped. So that's the next set, going back to the Brothers' War, basically to see how this is used. Interesting. This card's nuts, dude. This card is nuts. This card, like, especially when we're going to go... We're going right back to spending health for things? Like, what the fuck? But this has more implications on just not standard, dude. Or like, this is nuts. This is also, yeah, it's a timed board wipe too, which is cool. Dude, wait. Th this doesn't let you crack fetch lands. No. Yikes. Can't activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. Yeah. Wow. This will see play. If not yeah. a sideboard in card index, this will see fucking play. No more. What is uh, Bolus of Citadel? Yeah. No more of that. Yeah. See play. I like Karn Silex. And again, that that timed board wipe, really cool. Just wait till I mean, you get the mana. Yeah, isn't the time? Isn't that kind of just like? You can take us out if I'm wrong. Isn't this kind of like Nev's disc? Yeah, essentially. Same it is kind of like time. Nev's disc. But you can't cast things with life, dude. Crazy. <laughs> it's a plus. All right. Next up, we got a new Lotus. This is Timeless Lotus. Five generic mana, legendary artifact, enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap it to add Wooberg. That's good. It's not, it's not the best. I don't think it's a bad. No, it's definitely not bad. In a five-color I mean, deck, this could be fucking... A very easy mana fix, dude. Oh, yeah. Just... And I got Wooper. Yeah, because you could just have, like, oh, great, I've only drawn fucking green all game. Well, I paid five green to get this Lotus. Now I got Wooper. Yeah, I did see something that said this might even see play in standard because of Teferi, who slows the sunset. He can untap artifacts as a plus one. Oh, yeah. Shit. So this comes in, untaps it. You have five mana to work with now. This card could be sick. Yeah, I think I think people. Will... I'm excited to see the brews that come with this. I don't know yeah. if it's good enough to see play in EDH. I don't know. Five mana is why would why wouldn't it? it? It comes in tapped for five mana. Well, what's the? There's a five mana Lotus that only taps for three of the same color. But that Granted, doesn't come in. Yeah, doesn't come in tapped. Still, but this is so it's the same mana, and you get Wooberg. This can definitely see play in EDH. I think, dude. Yeah, but the, the whole problem is it comes in tapped. It means you spent five, you don't get any back. The other one, you spend five, you get three back immediately. So you're only spending two. Yes, you're right. Okay, you're right. Well, we can when you want, we can play in a make believe world. We're like, what about uh, huh. I have that deck where the artifact that lets things that come in tapped come in untapped. Play that, dude, and then profit. That's, that's true too. We can do that. <laughs> but either way, this this card does seem decent. How about that? I'll give it a decent. Okay. New Lotus. I'll give it a B. Oh, we're grading things now? Sick. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Vodalian Mindsinger. Vodalian Mindsinger is 1-2 blue for a 2-2 two, two creature merfolk wizard. 
It has a kicker of one and a red and or one and a green. It says it enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it for each time it was kicked. And when it enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature with power less than a medallion mind singer's power for as long as you control a medallion mind singer. So you kind of have to kick this. Otherwise, you have to pick something that has less than two. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about this one. This seems like a bulk rare to me. Yeah. Unless there is a way to cheat it in with more power. I'm just trying to think of a situation, but I I feel like it still could be played. And I don't know. I just don't want to sound like we're like, oh, oh bad. But someone's gonna I mean, figure out a way to like make it work. Yeah, but you're essentially you're paying five mana for a three three that enters that grabs something less than three until this. Oh, is I here. guess. Well, no, it's because it gets two plus one plus ones. Okay. So five mana right. for. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah, five mana for a four four. I guess that's good. Get something less than four. Grab something yeah, like a Thalia or something. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, man. I just don't. But it's, I don't yeah. know if I like it. I don't like the ones that only keep until this card, like, keeping as long as this card is uh, in play kind of thing. But, whatever. Uh, right, I, next uh, next up, we have Temporary Lockdown. Temporary Lockdown is one and two white for an enchantment. It says, when Temporary Lockdown enters the battlefield, exile each non-land permanent with mana value two or less until it leaves the battlefield. So you're basically... Interesting board wiping all the small stuff that's including yours though yeah until it leaves them yeah so It'll i mean we've seen this enough. effect over and over again like portable hole it's also like touch of the spirit realm where that comes in and it's just gonna exile something until it leaves the battlefield there's all these effects these enchantments so seeing this on an enchantment that kind of wipes the board interesting <laughs> Definitely, definitely hurts those aggro decks. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, aggro. I think this goes into a blue-white control deck. Yeah, I can see that. Because you're not really going to be playing those creatures to get rid of this. I hope. That would suck if you're playing <laughs> something. <laughs> I assume you're running counter spells on on uh, two mana. This is your three mana spell. So, what? Uh, Is this just like the clip from the card like what's on the bottom right there it's like feathers it, it's just uh it's whoever spoiled it okay i'm like that doesn't look right yeah uh but yeah this um i think this will probably see play like i said we've seen all the others all those other cards see play yeah so, it's three mana so yeah three mana for a temporary lockdown and usually when these come in i don't have a way to get rid of it so yeah <laughs> sucks man and the final card today, we have probably my favorite card of the day, Rundvelt Horde Master. Rundvelt Horde Master, it is one and a red for a 1-1 one, one creature goblin warrior. It says other goblins you control get plus one, plus one. And whenever Rundvelt Horde Master or another goblin you control dies, exile the top card of your library. If it's a goblin creature card, you may cast that card until end of turn. Goblins! I like Gobos, it. Gobos, dude? Gobos. I mean, card advantage seems good. Mono red gobos is already a thing. In standard, is it really? I'm so out of touch. Yeah, it is. It doesn't see as much Boros aggro, but every once in a while, you'll run into this guy just trying to run Goblo. Goblo. Gob, Goblo goblin aggro. aggro dude. Goblo. That's, what, that's the new thing. Goblo. Yeah. Well, if there's a Goblo deck, then this seems like a card that would be a four of in it. Yeah, only two mana. Seems yep. good. And then when it dies, you can just look for goblins. <laughs> yep. That's it, though. That is, uh, that's all the cards from that's it? this weekend and today. Yeah. What wow. do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite from, from ye old cards? Favorite. You're a fan of the Silex. Right I mean, everyone's going to be a fan of the Silex, bro. The Goyf oh, is pretty Goyf, good. Dude, just, it's just dumb. The Goyf is just dumb. Are you sure it's not so, Karn? So, it's not Karn. It's definitely not Karn. <laughs> the land is insane. Like that, I feel like there's just a lot of nutty cards that were spoiled. Yeah, definitely is. So Goyf is your favorite. I'm going to go ahead and go with the Weatherlight Completed. 
I think it's very cool. Yeah, vehicle very cool. that doesn't get crude, but instead just times to a creature. Interesting. Seems nice. Interesting card design. Uh, but that is it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like button if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. What are you waiting for? We're almost at 2,000 subs. Uh, don't forget to follow us on our Instagram and Twitter. Check out our Instagram especially because if you don't see a card that you know is spoiled, like a uncommon or common, don't worry. We've posted it over on our Instagram. In the final day of spoilers, we go through and pull the top three most liked cards on our Instagram that we didn't talk about in our videos. So go over there, take a look at all of the cards. And until tomorrow, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace. Bye.